Recently, Apple released this short film. Uh, of course, it's really a commercial, and a lot of people have been talking about it. And there's also been a lot of questions about this. It's called Snow Brawl. And so today, I am going to do a quasi breakdown of what they did, at least my best guess at what they did, since I have no involvement with this project. But it was shot on an iPhone, and so I wanted to try to demystify a little bit about what they did and show you how you can do this on your own projects. Learn how to turn your smartphone into a professional quality video camera. Be sure to check out our mobile filmmaking courses, master the Filmic Pro app, and learn about smartphone video and cinematography. And also don't forget, we have a companion filmmaking podcast. Links are in the description. So the first thing I'll say is if you haven't seen this Snow Brawl commercial, definitely go check it out first because otherwise you won't really know what I'm talking about. I pulled this off YouTube. They did a really nice making of, and they also of course have the commercial out there. The first thing I wanna talk about is how they got this kind of production using an iPhone. And I really think that's a good question because there was a lot of speculation out there as there always is that they didn't really use the stock iPhone or they didn't really do as they say. Now, is there more involved here than just an iPhone? Absolutely, as you can see in the behind the scenes here. But that's not to say they didn't actually use an iPhone. So let's go through this. Right here is an iPhone 11 Pro. And the cool thing is you can right away see they just went with the stock lenses and stock everything. No ND filters either. And I'll get to that in a little bit. This guy's holding it on a gimbal. And in this shot, if you'll look around, you see all this smoke. And so they absolutely use smoke machines. And that's a big thing, especially in this shot here where she's running. Well, they use smoke all over it actually. And I wanna pause right here. This is kind of an interesting trick they did. With an iPhone, you can't really get long lens shots because the small sensor, meaning long lens shots, meaning shallow depth of field. And so here they did something kind of cool. They made the background very busy, but full of smoke. And so it separates her from the background. Now they may have done some of this in color grading. They probably put a, a power window around her face a power window is more or less a mask and they bring her face up. But that's a nice touch and really gives it a big look. And especially these running shots in slow motion. The other thing they did here is a shot with two cameras. You can see right here in this behind the scenes clip, You got the guy in the foreground going handheld and the guy in the background has the phone on a gimbal, but it's connected to a monopod. This part right here. That's the director. This right here is simply a monitor. That's like a director's viewfinder. That's a big hood. And that's just a monitor on some C stand or some sort of rig. I wanted to point out that in this behind the scenes clip, they're apparently using the native app. I personally have a little bit of a hard time believing they use the native app throughout, but maybe they did. Having higher bit rate on a third party app and being able to set your white balance are really important for something like this. But since it's an Apple paid project, maybe they did. Usually they'll use something like Filmic Pro in these kind of jobs though. And by the way, if you look there closely, that DP Robert Elswit, Google him, see what kind of work he's done. Right here in this shot, you've got the camera operator holding a camera, and then you've got the director right here with a director's viewfinder. And then you've got the mic here at the top of the shot, and then someone holding a flag. And you got a lot of smoke in the background. And that's one thing here you can really see in these shots where they're smoking up the, they're adding atmosphere. And they did the same thing with snow. They used the snow machine. At first I thought maybe they added a lot of digital snow, and they may have done some of that in post-production, but really most of this was done on location, it appears, with snow machines. I wanted to point out, I went past this shot. That, I'm almost certain, is a digital zoom in post-production. They shot 4K 
And so you can easily push in, especially if you're editing at a lower resolution like 1080. And right here you can see they're using a B script. It's just a basic B script with the iPhone 11 Pro. And again, no ND filters. There's the B script again. And they used it in a pretty unique way. Right here, they connect it to a sled. And this is where the ultra wide lens comes in really handy because if you follow my videos, you know that the ultra wide lens does not have OIS, optical image stabilization. OIS causes all kinds of jittery, jello-y stuff. And so not having OIS is great for filmmakers and they actually proved it right here. This is a behind the scenes shot. They did this silly little overlay that wouldn't be how the footage really looks, obviously. They're trying to show that it was shot on the native app, I guess. This is more of an extended behind the scenes shot of that epic running shot. And you can really see everything going on here, which is pretty nice. This is a good looking shot. It's a very good looking shot. Again, you can do this yourself, maybe not to this level just because of all the people involved. But as far as shooting, this was just shot 4K 60, played back at 24p, so you get a 40% slow-mo look. That is more than likely the sun back there. I'm not 100% sure because I do have HMIs, but that is absolutely doable on your own in your own projects. And right here, you can see the director has the camera and he's doing a pseudo little handheld dolly. And you got foam core right there, a little bounce. You can see him pushing in right there as she spins in. Here you can see the mic coming in the shot and you got a lot of action going on. The choreography in this is, is good and that is something that would be a lot harder to do on your own. Not impossible, but you could definitely do something more small scale. Right back here you can see, I think that's a snow machine, but it could be a smoke machine. It's a little bit hard to tell. The guy holding this rig back here in the back. Right here you can see the lights, big HMIs, big daylight balanced HMI lights, director looking into a viewfinder here, a director's monitor, kind of a mini video village, so to speak. But it's kind of cool to see this sequence put together. And look back here, you can see right here, a blower blowing a lot of smoke in the background. There might be a snow blower back there as well. 4K 60, and that could have been slowed down more in post-production. There's a couple shots where I think they may have used a plug-in like Twixter, where you can really slow it down even more. This ending shot here is kind of cool, and this is one thing I love about mobile filmmaking. Director right here, I think that's the director. This ending shot, he holds the camera up, just like you would shooting a shot of your kid's soccer game. And then there's the actual shot. You can see all the snow there blowing. And that's how it ends in the actual video right here as they're walking away. And so now I just wanna look at a couple pieces here and try to explain how I think they did it. And again, show you how you can do this on your own videos. All right, so the first thing I wanna talk about is 4K60 because I'd heard some people out there saying they thought this was shot 4K60 for 60 frames per second playback and that is not what they did. They shot 4K 60 for 24P playback. Here are the files I actually downloaded off YouTube, and you can see they're 23976, which is 24P. And so anytime there is a slow-mo shot, they shot 4K 60, like right here. So again, you shoot 4K 60 frames per second, and then when you take it into your editing app, you put it into a 24 frames per second sequence. Now, depending on how it was shot, it may be conformed in the app or it may end up being conformed in post-production. In this case, my guess is since it was evidently shot in the native camera app, then you would conform it in post because 4K 60 in an iPhone is just 4K 60. If you are using an app like Filmic Pro or Mavis, you can tell it to make it do slow-mo in camera. And you can do that on the iPhone, but that's with shooting the 120 frames per second or the 240 frames per second. And I mean, you can do that in the native iPhone camera app. 
Okay, now this shot here, this is why I think they use Twixter or some sort of post-production way to speed ramp and or do really silky smooth slow motion. Right there. So they're running and it looks like they're running at normal speed, 24 frames per second. And then boom, right there goes into slow-mo. So you would shoot that at a higher frame rate. And then again, you would conform that in post-production and you can do speed ramps in Premiere or Final Cut Pro. But that slow-mo, to my eye anyway, looks slower than 60. Looks like it's going down to maybe, I don't know, 120 frames per second. Maybe not quite that slow. Maybe like a 90 frames per second kind of look. But it's slow. You get that nice blast of snow right into the camera lens. Same with this shot right here, the kid. Good slow-mo shot. They did a nice job of mixing regular speed with slow-mo. I like that. So that's 4K 60. Now let's talk about motion blur or lack thereof. One of the things I preach all the time on this channel is to use ND filters. And I stand by that. And more times than not, that's what you want to do. But the one caveat I always say is if you're doing an action scene, and again, this really applies more to traditional cameras because smartphones without ND filters, you routinely will get the, what I call stuttery or a zombie look because it's just shooting at such a fast shutter, especially in bright outside conditions. But here, as you can plainly see, no ND filter, but it's the look they wanted. Because what that does is give you a clean frame. You don't have any blur in the frame. So you can see right here with this snowman, all the snow, even though the camera is moving a little bit, all the snow there, you can see each individual snowflake. Some of that might be digital added later. I don't think so. Same with this shot here. That's in slow-mo of course, but this shot here too, you can really see it's moving fast and you get that real good stuttery, I guess staccato is a better word. It's the same kind of look or similar idea that is in a movie like Saving Private Ryan. You see this a lot in action scenes of all kinds of movies, but it's really prominent here. If they would have used motion blur, it would have had a totally different look. You can really see it here with all the snow falling. As I step through that, there's no blur on the frame at all the kids moving their hands. This is a lower res copy of this as I downloaded off YouTube. So it's compressed quite a bit, but you can still tell there's no motion blur there. Same with that shot. Really the whole thing, you can just see, like look at this kid's arm as you threw that snowball. You can just step through it. No blur whatsoever. And again, it works great here. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you're wanting to shoot traditional stuff, you wanna use an ND filter. That's one of my number one tips because if you're trying to do a normal scene in a movie and it's in bright conditions, that staccato look looks like a zombie movie. That's not really what you want. In this kind of scenario, it looks good. Even this last scene right here when they're walking away, you can really see the fast shutter speed right there. She's bouncing up and down. There's no blur whatsoever. But again, it looks good here. All right, one last thing, and this is more of a conceptual thing just to think about, and that is when you watch a short film like this, an action-oriented film, it may look complicated. But if you break it down into bite-sized chunks and really shot by shot, you'll see that it isn't that complicated. Now again, the choreography, that is a little more complex. They use stunt coordinators in this one according to the behind the scenes, but the kids did all the stunts more or less themselves. But as far as piecing together a sequence, think about it shot by shot. For example, right here, you got this shot of a snowball dropping down to her. So it's just one shot, you got a high angle. You probably had someone just off camera holding that snowball and then dropped it and pulled their hand out. Same with this shot here. 
someone dropped it just from the top of the frame in their hand and then they did a small push in. So a really simple sequence like that, if you just think about it as individual shots, it really is not nearly as complicated. Shot one, shot two, and then that's just a shot of a kid throwing and that's a shot. Again, if you were trying to stage all this in one big epic wide shot, that is more challenging for sure. And it can be done and they have some wide shots in here, but when you look at it on a close-up basis or a medium shot, you got a shot of the kid throwing, that's just one shot. You could do that, you know, 10 times in a row to get the right, to get the right pacing you want. Really what I'm trying to say is all these shots then come together in the edit. And so all those shots go together to create a sequence. And so the reason I brought that up is when you first see this, it is fairly complicated looking, but really if you look at it from a shot by shot basis, this is something, again, not quite as advanced as this because they had a lot of cool stuff like the big HMIs and the smoke machines, etc. But you can definitely do something like this on your own. Again, just keep in mind, these guys are using an iPhone just like you have in your pocket right now. The exact same phone. And of course, it doesn't have to be an iPhone. This could be any Android phone, a Google Pixel, a Samsung, whatever you want to use. So yeah, they had a pretty big crew and they had a decent amount of filmmaking toys at their disposal, mainly grip gear and lighting. Looks like they shot with two cameras, two setups, and they used a handheld rig and then a monopod rig with a gimbal on the end of it. So almost like a mini crane. But again, that's stuff that you can absolutely put together yourself. And that's actually one thing the director says at the end of this behind the scenes. He hopes this inspires people to get out there and try this themselves. And I completely agree with that. Hopefully this piece can inspire the filmmakers to take the device out and be as creative as we were here. Well, I hope you liked the breakdown I did of this video. Again, get out there, make your own films. You can use an iPhone, you could use whatever kind of camera you want, to be honest. But getting a look behind the scenes, I think, really does help demystify the process and thus can help you go out and make better films. Thanks for watching, guys. This is Blake Calhoun. Please like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.